Hello fellow Divine Feminines, how are you doing out there? I'm doing rather well today. Uh, my name is Daniela Jumel, for those who may not know me. If you are new here, welcome. If you are old here, welcome. Nice to see you. Um, I am feeling like need a bit of a, a bit of a, just a bit of a boost here. I know that it's fun, obviously, to talk about Divine Masculine, what is he doing? <laughs> but I also find that it gets um, distracting to constantly be thinking about that. It's kind of a trick that our ego plays on us that, you know, if we think about them, then, you know, then they're going to come to us, you know, but I found that to be quite the opposite. The more that I focus on my own stuff and less about his stuff, you know, the the nicer it is in the end, because that's when, you know, start seeing photographs more often and questions and concerns and, you know, like a more realistic relationship that way because it's unity consciousness that you're seeking not separation consciousness so oh well I was on the right track apparently um, readiness will show itself through easy communication where both counterparts are compassionate not judgmental so in case you didn't know I made this deck of cards myself, that's my handwriting right there, um, because these are messages and concepts that I would have appreciated knowing when I was first sort of discovering that this is a part of who I am and what my awakening is like, because uh, as we know, there isn't really a twin flame journey, so to speak. It's a spiritual awakening caused by meeting another person, or in my case, just knowing that other person is out there. <laughs> I've always known who he is. I just happened to have known him since I was a kid, and we were both kids together. So we've always known each other. It's not that I just met him. I've known him for quite some time. But I'm just now learning who he is and why he never leaves. <laughs> um, anyway, having said all that, um, when you are able to, and in a space where you just communicate easy with your person, and I'm sure that that has happened for you, uh, it is from a place of inner peace and love and kindness with yourself. When you do that, it's so much easier to just communicate with your person when you do communicate with them. It's so much easier to do that and not be mired in the, well, they said this, so what does that mean? And what should I say back? And you know, you're not in that kind of a zone where you're analyzing everything and you're worried about every little thing that you say. Um, <laughs> and if you're me, you're worried about, should I have put a semicolon there instead of a period? You know, like <laughs> worrying about all those little tiny, tiny details because you're so, well, worried about them and what they're thinking and, and stuff all the time. When, when that's not at issue, that's when communication happens so easy and effortlessly and you don't have those hiccups where somebody says something that affects the other person and, you know, maybe 
derails things a little bit in the conversation and you might end up in a silence or something like that. Uh, you know, that tends to happen very little once you become ready to receive what they're giving you. And that comes from doing, you know, your own inner work and learning to forgive things about yourself that, that, that you need to forgive, ultimately. <laughs> um, it is being judgmental that causes us to, to do just what I described, right? It causes us to read, if they're, if they're communicating with us in text form, it can cause us to read what they say and depending what kind of a mood we're in when we're reading it, we can interpret the message entirely incorrectly because we're imagining a certain tone in our, in, in our mind that they are speaking that word with. Like, you can... How many ways can you read the word okay? Okay. 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 You know, like, there's, okay. You know, there's all different tones of voice there, right? Same word. <laughs> but if you don't have benefit of hearing the, that tone, the entire meaning can be changed, right? That's just an easy example that I could think of off the top of my head. But, my gosh, when I was not ready to receive what he was trying to give, I was busy interpreting what he was saying and, you know, if I was having a hard day for some reason, then I would interpret what he would, what he said with that tone and, you know, left and right, we would have little kind of spats with each other because he didn't understand that I was doing that. <laughs> and, you know, naturally, right? Makes sense. Because he knew what he meant in sending a particular message. He knew where he was coming from. But because I was off being in a state of ego and judgment, I, oh, excuse me, fear, <clears throat> um, I was mis misunderstanding what he was saying. But once I got into a state of being able, excuse me, being able to be compassionate and understanding, then those misunderstandings stopped happening because I was able to ask, you know, what did you mean by that? Do you mean this? And you know, like, I would change the diction a little bit and be like, oh, you mean like, da 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 da. And, you know, I, I'd either get a, yeah, just like that, or no, nah, not really. And then he would elaborate why that, that was incorrect. You know, it. <laughs> this sounds so elementary. <laughs> this is how we communicate with people. You know, like, it sounds so obvious but it really isn't because I don't know how many times I would get really offended and mad about something that was not even there it wasn't real I just made it all up because I was so hard on myself and not ready for it you know so that's how you know if you know where you're at in the in the whole process if you're feeling um i mean of course we all like to sit here and say well i understand everything what what's the matter with with them why aren't they being you know this and that and the other thing right we all do that we all do that and that's you know obviously ego and judgment and not 
being re ready to be present and accepting of the the communication being given to us. Um, it's it's what you need to strive for. If there is some sort of a silence, which often these moments can cause, you know, if there's been a misunderstanding like that, uh, or even if it wasn't a misunderstanding and you're both just mad at each other, you know, that's okay too. Those moments are given to us so that we may step away and you know feel the feelings the initial feelings are going to be there and that's okay i'm not saying deny your feelings and pretend that they're not there because that's not healthy either but what i am saying is those moments are when you get to stop worrying about that okay we're just not getting along right now all right <laughs> you know and that allows you on your own and in your own time and in your own way to feel the feelings and experience that and be upset by them or angry or whatever you're gonna feel um, but but then you can understand okay well I reacted that way because this was happening and this and this and this hmm well, that changes things now, doesn't it? You know, and once you get there and realize that and are able to forgive yourself for it and stop having those, those negative feelings that you were having, then you can return to each other and be able to, you know, move forward more productively and there is no need to be angry with them anymore because because you're not angry with yourself. Hello, Henry. I hear you. Yes, hi. <laughs> I guess that means I need to go and check on what's going on over there. <laughs> anyway. So, don't be hard on yourself if your counterpart and you are not in a super great space right now. Um, just treat it as a luxury, you know, time apart where you can just worry about your own life and they can worry about their life. And when you're both ready and feeling safe enough, then you can continue forward without needing to rehash it all and just, you know, you don't need to do any of that. Once that's all processed, it's processed. It's in the past. But you have to actually do that and, and <laughs> let it be in the past as well. Once the feelings stop being boiling at the surface, that's how you know you're you're in a, a state of forgiveness or almost <laughs> forgiveness. So I will leave us with that. I hope it has helped in some way. And I will uh, remind us all that uh, you are loved by me and by the community. And of course, most of all, by your divine counterpart, especially when you are loving yourself. So focus on that. You don't have to focus on anything else, I promise. So long as you're doing the right things and living in your authentic truth, there's nothing to worry about. So I will see you in the next video.